Hey guys, welcome back to the BFS Fishing Channel. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to tear down your 2022 Shimano Aldebaran BFS reel, but also do a worm gear bearing upgrade to make the Shimano Aldebaran an 11 plus one ball bearing reel. This reel, for whatever reason, comes in with 10 plus one ball bearing stock. And so what you kind of feel as a result of that is kind of a, a handle that doesn't want to freely rotate. When you go ahead and upgrade that worm gear bushing into a bearing, the handle then does want to rotate a lot more. So we're basically making a very smooth feeling reel thanks to the micromodule gears feel even smoother. Okay, so what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna go ahead and remove the retaining nut on the handle and for this you're going to be using a j1 phillips and so that's this screw right here all right so what you have is basically a nut and just to get a good uh, accurate sizing on that that's going to be coming in at a 10 millimeter size um, i've got this special tool that comes in a ace hawk kit and uh, because mine is a left-handed reel you have to go lefty, or I'm sorry, righty loosey, lefty tighty. Kind of odd when you first start working on this on these uh, left-handed reels. If, if you're using a right-handed reel, obviously it's going to be the opposite and it will still be lefty loosey, righty tighty. Okay, so the first thing is we're gonna go ahead and remove the handle and we can go ahead and put that aside and it looks like the, um, the clicking mechanism or the plastic portion went ahead and came off with the handle for me you can just take that off and then go ahead and put it back on the side I'm gonna rest the handle up here and then take off and remove the drag star and just to kind of show you guys what it looks like under here because this is where the drag star clicker mechanism lives we're gonna go ahead and remove this plastic piece and if you see there is actually a little spring loaded um, kind of a ball detent system that works in conjunction with the bottom of this uh, plastic washer of sorts that creates the, the clicking sounds. Let me see if we can reproduce that. So when you put pressure on that plastic piece, it makes that clicking sound. All right, so the drag star is right there and the drag star is made out of uh, CI4 material. Okay, so what you got next is a bunch of, uh, I believe these are spring washers. And the next thing is a, a nut where that spring washer rests on. What I like to do is I kind of like to rest my thumb on the spool and then go using the same ideology. So basically righty loosey uh, on this left-handed reel to remove this nut. And this does have kind of a ledge for that washer to rest on. So you can see there. And with this nut is coming a copper washer and this is sided. There's a darker side that rests right underneath this nut, and then the copper side is facing towards the reel itself. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and have those two together. Then you have another spring washer. This one is curved, and that's what uh, gives it the, the springy portion. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that aside, and then there is a very, very thin washer underneath that. Let's see if we can get that off. So very, very thin washer underneath that. And then we'll go ahead and set that aside as well. Okay, so then the next thing is basically to get into the reel itself and we'll go ahead and remove the side plate. Um, I do wanna talk a little bit about the side plate and the FTB system on this particular reel. It's interesting because what, what I noticed is that this metallic ring is actually magnetic. So, you can, I don't know if you guys can tell, but my magnet, my neodymium magnet is actually being attracted to this, I believe it's a steel ring. I am not 100% sure as to why that is steel, but what I did notice is that the brake shoes on this FTB system are actually being attracted to that steel portion. So I'm wondering if they're kind of absorbing some of the magnetic forces and eddy currents that are coming off of uh, these magnets to begin with to kind of act as a shield 
and that's also really working to reduce any kind of uh, magnetic forces that the spool is encountering um, when you've got the brake setting at the lowest. In addition to that, the, um, the brakes do fully retract away from the spool itself as well. So that's uh, you know really, really good design on uh, Shimano's part. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set the side plate there. And then I'm gonna take out my spool. This is the, uh, the KKR three gram spool. And um, yeah, I need to get more testing in with this, but uh, it does come in at three grams. If you haven't seen the video, check out the, uh, I'll, I'll leave a link in the uh, upper corner to that video talking about this modification. Okay. So we'll go ahead and set that aside too. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and break down the reel. What we'll need is our Phillips again. And there's going to be one on the, let's see, the bottom of the reel. There's going to be one, two, three, and then there's one more. You gotta push the clutch back up and then there's a fourth screw there. And, and then there is a fifth screw on the outer upper portion of the reel itself. And so these, these four right here are actually different sizes. And so we do need to kind of take note of those sizes. And so what I'll do is I will take off the top outer screw first. These are all Phillips. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and put that down first. So I'm doing the top one first. Then I'm gonna flip the reel over and then I'm gonna go from the front towards the back of the reel. So the front of the reel towards the back of the reel where the clutch button is. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, while I'm doing this, I do wanna say that I, I started making you know videos on my channel with primarily teardown uh, videos and I did it because you know I wanted to show that a person who uh, had pretty much n not had much experience tearing reels down could you know go ahead and and do it confidently and you know if something goes wrong well you know you can always go back and try to fix it it's just when you lose parts essentially that uh, you know you're not going to really be able to do anything anyways. With that being said, I've gone ahead and taken out the five screws holding the handle side plate on, and we're going to go ahead and remove this directly up. And when we've done so, we can go ahead and see the inside of the reel. And what I want to show you is the inside of the handle side plate. You do have a sleeve that is directional that goes into the anti-reverse clutch roller bearing. And uh, this sleeve, um, when we reinstall everything, you want basically these two little arms to rest inside. If I can show you real quick. There's two little open wings on the main gear. And these two little arms are gonna basically match up with that. So they will go right like that. So everything rests flush. Okay, so we're gonna take that off for now and then we're gonna go ahead and set that aside as well as the side plate and the handle or main shaft outer bearing is also coming out, but it rests right there. Okay, for these teardowns, you actually don't have to go ahead and remove the spool tension knob. If you want to, you can, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna, well, okay, I'll, I guess I will show you what's under there. There's another bearing inside that is being held in with a retaining clip. And uh, there's not really any need for me to take that out. There is an O-ring to keep out uh, dust and dirt and water. Um, and so, yeah, nice touch there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set this aside. Uh, when you're cleaning out your reels, it does help to kind of look inside and see if there's any dust and, and whatnot. Mine actually looks pretty clean. You will notice that these two clutch springs actually reside in these little indentations right here next to the spool tension bearing. And uh, yeah, those should be lightly greased as well. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move this main gear assembly. And the main gear assembly consists of the main gear, 
but also the drag clicker and uh, one of the drag washers. So let me go ahead and this comes straight up and off of the main shaft. And so here we go. And if you accidentally take off this, uh, this drag clicker assembly, that's okay. What you will notice, and I'll do it for you guys, um, it's two pieces like that. And so this is keyed and it rests in this, uh, I think it's a carbon, some sort of carbon composite um, drag clicker assembly. And this has a whole bunch of little ribs on it that interact with this little tiny uh, spring-loaded ball detent. And then you'll find your carbon text drag washer right underneath there. And um, so what makes this a micromodule gear is the number of these teeth on the main gear. There's a lot of them, a lot more than a normal reel with this kind of uh, gear ratio. And then the main gear itself is heavily ported and it's very light. So yeah, if you're noticing that your uh, reel, any reel basically has a, you know, kind of a drag that is not very smooth and it kind of, uh, it, it, there, you don't feel anything and then all of a sudden it grabs and then you have a lot of drag. Basically what you can do is you can really lightly grease your drag washer and that'll just kind of help the, the drag washer kind of slip against the main gear uh, as you're playing the fish. And it'll hopefully, in theory, make your drag uh, a lot smoother and more consistent as well. The other thing that uh, kind of allows you to adjust that is basically these uh, spring washers that are kind of located on the outer portion where the drag star is. Basically what's happening is you're compressing nothing, 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 and then when you get to that uh, compression point where you're starting to compress these uh, spring washers, then you start feeling a lot of resistance. And so you'll see some reels have two of them and then some of them only have one. And I believe part of the reason is because it has this also additional spring washer. Anyways, okay, so then the next portion is going to be this, and I don't know the term for this yet, um, but you do have another drag washer, and I don't know the material that this is, um, but yeah, it works, and so yeah. Okay, so the next part we're gonna go ahead and remove is basically the whole pinion slash clutch assembly. And so what you'll notice is that there's two little springs here, so I'll bring it a little bit closer. So one here and one here that are kind of residing on these little pegs. And you also notice that it's uh, kind of greased, so it's pretty shiny in that part. And that is for a couple of reasons. One, it's to help keep those springs kind of in place. And then the other is to basically act as lubrication because it's a moving part. And so to remove them, it's pretty easy. You just, you know, take it. You can use your hands if you want, but uh, I'm just using these tweezers. It does help to have a nice pair of tweezers handy when you're working on these reels. Okay, the next part is to go ahead and remove the pinion and this little brace or bracket. And this is actually, it's kind of a half circle, but then also it has these little slanted cutouts. And what that's for is so that if I put this back on, can give you a demonstration. Okay, you can see that it kind of pushes the, the pinion up or outwards. You see right there? And it's it's a it's doing that because this uh, clutch assembly is also at a slant or has a slope there. So as I press the clutch button down, it's moving this back, but those pegs, those pegs right there, are keeping the kind of uh, pinion in place. And so it's pushing it up and away from the reel. So just make sure that when you go ahead and put the reel back together, that the half circle portion is kind of pointing back towards the clutch button. This is gonna be a little bit different on different reels. And so if you're kind of not sure, then I would just stop and then take a photo of, um, you know, of the, uh, the orientation of this portion or this part, because most contemporary reels have this part. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take out the pinion. 
I'll go ahead and set that right there. Okay. Clean up my area a little bit because I'm running out of space. Okay, so basically the next portion is we're gonna basically remove this main shaft assembly. And to do that, you're going to take out two uh, Phillips screws. So one here and then one up here. And I'll go ahead and do that right now. And one of the ball bearings on this reel is going to be underneath this portion, which also has O-rings incidentally. All right. So here is the here's the main shaft assembly. There's a gear, there's a ball bearing, and then the main shaft itself and just kind of rotates around. So there is directionality to this, and you'll see that there's a little tiny, uh, almost like a clip of some sort, and uh, that does have a place where it's supposed to rest. So it rests right here, like that. And the reason why you have that little tiny extra notch or tab is because it is covering up and keeping this little shaft right here in place. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there is a shaft right here that basically is a part of the line guide itself. All right, so there's two C-clips. There's one right here that's retaining the worm gear itself and then also keeping the bushing onto the worm shaft. And then there's one C-clip here to basically keep the worm shaft from falling out this way. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the C-clip on this side first. And uh, I've got this special screwdriver bit. It's a security bit. It's kind of U-shaped and I found that it uh, works really, really well for these small C-clips. When I take off these C-clips, I like to keep my thumb to kind of cover things up so that uh, the C-clip doesn't go flying. And then just, you know, push with uh, a controlled amount of force, consistent and controlled, but you'll see that there's those two little notches there on the side that I'm talking about. At this point, you could stop and then get something in one of those little openings and then pull the C-clip away, which is exactly what I just did there. I just had to cover it up with my thumb because I didn't want to, you know, let it go flying off. So here's C-clip number one. And then you'll find that there's, uh, I believe there's two washers if I remember correctly. And wow dog hairs. Gotta love it. So there's one. This is the outer one. And then there is a, what I believe is an anti-friction material washer. Or there's two of them. So there's a thicker one and then a smaller thinner one. And uh, as soon as I've thinner metal one. As soon as I've done that, now the worm shaft and the line guide wants to come out. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this, this shaft out because when we put it back in, it does have to go into, uh, right there. It does have to kind of go into this little hole. So just remember that, but I'm gonna take it out because it's gonna get in my way and then I'll set it right there. And this is also keyed. So you can, you can see that there is a little bit of an indentation on this side. And what that does is when you put it back in, if you're coming in from the worm gear side and you're putting it into this hole, it's not the raised one, but the smaller one, the indentation side or the smaller side, smaller diameter side has to go in first because that fits into a matching hole on this side of the reel right there. All right. So we'll go ahead and let that fall out. And then you're free basically to kind of remove a little bit of this worm shaft assembly. But we're not gonna take out the whole thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove this C-clip first, then this gear will come off. And I believe the gear is also keyed. I should be wearing gloves. I, I recommend that when you work on reels that you kind of wear gloves, but uh, yeah, I don't know how detracting or hard to see black gloves will make this whole assembly process or disassembly process, I should say. All right, so the same thing I pushed and then I'm gonna use uh, that part of the 
screwdriver to kind of get into one of these little openings. Okay, so it does take a little bit of uh, persuasion to come off, but when it does come off, you'll notice that this is also keyed. So there is a, a shape there, there's an orientation, but also from this way, there is a smaller uh, diameter portion to the worm gear. And that actually goes towards, towards the towards the middle of the uh, the reel. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. All right, and so here you can see where I've actually already gone ahead and upgraded the bearing. So when you do this, just try to hold on to some part of the uh, the line guide assembly, and then you can go ahead and pull off the bearing itself. It does take a little bit of persuasion as well I don't really want to remove the pawl if I can help it all right so there <laughs> of course it's not gonna make it easy okay so there is one washer like this and this is not directional in any way shape or form and that actually goes on before you put the bearing on. And so I'll pretend like I'm kind of installing everything. So that's the washer there. And that can kind of, if you kind of push it down very far, then that's good. And it'll eventually, it'll just seat. And then your bearing will go next. And what you can do is you can just kind of cover up this side with your finger so that when you do put a little bit of pressure on the line guide itself, that, uh, I'm sorry, the worm shaft itself, that the um, it won't go anywhere and you can actually seat the bearing fully. Then you'll notice that the worm shaft may be a little bit proud or stick out a little bit. So let's see if we can't get things to seat. So this side also has an orientation. So you can see there, if I push it down, it doesn't seat, but then if I kind of get it to line up, it'll fully seat right there. All right, so on this side, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall, uh, where did that little washer go? Oh, the washer's on there already. Okay, so the next part that goes on is the worm gear itself. And so at this point, we're just kind of going backwards and reinstalling everything and reassembling everything, right? So. Here is the worm gear, and this is keyed, remember? And this shaft portion is also keyed, and the smaller diameter is going on first. And so keep your finger on this side of everything and then push down until you get it to the point where the worm shaft actually has a little bit of, uh, um, you can see a little bit there. So the C-clip that goes back on can kind of grab onto something. All right, so then we're gonna take our C-clip we're gonna lay it flat on there, just like so. Hopefully you guys can see that. Then, now I like to use a flathead screwdriver bit to kind of reinstall these. And I do the same thing, I kind of cover it up so that in, just in case it goes flying off, at least my thumb is there to kind of secure it. And then you just push, and eventually it seats. All right, so then, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this um, dowel. But what we need to do is we need to, as we're kind of working it through, it needs to go into that little opening on, I don't know if you guys can see, because it's kind of dark, um, the line guide opening itself, and then it needs to seat into the frame opening. And there we go. All right, so now I'm going to take my index finger, pointer finger, and cover that up so that it doesn't fall out and continuously fall out. All right, so now what we need to do is basically install everything in reverse. So first washer goes onto this side of the worm shaft, followed by the friction or anti-friction washer, followed by the regular washer followed by the C-clip. Okay. 
So really this portion right here, breaking down the worm shaft and whatnot is actually the hardest part of a real disassembly. You can go even further with it by taking out the, uh, by taking out the line guide itself. And you'll find that there's a little tiny thing called a pawl, which resides in this area where there's that little plastic nut and a pawl looks like this. And so this part right here actually has a kind of a half semicircle and that rests up against the worm shaft and kind of goes back and forth with it like this as the line guide goes back and forth. Anyways, okay. So at this point, I'm going to stop the video because the reinstallation is essentially the same thing as the teardown, but basically you put back in your main gear assembly, screw that back in, put your, uh, this um, anti-reverse portion of the main gear and uh, main gear assembly, and then your main gear, your dry clicker assembly. You definitely wanna put this sleeve on first, and then you can put in your pinion put your side plate back on, get your screws, and then assemble all the handle side of the reel. Anyways, this has been a very long video. Uh, in my opinion, the bearing upgrade to the worm gear bushing is, is worth it. Uh, it's made the reel feel even smoother than it was before, which is kind of crazy because the, uh, the micro module gears make the reel feel very smooth to begin with. Anyways, if you found this video useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed uh, and this has helped you, please consider subscribing. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.